Hello class, my name is Giancarlo Perez, and I will be discussing Yemen's demographics and criminal justice system. I am a researcher out on the field and will inform everyone on Yemen as much as possible. So to get started, I'd like to get started on the country's demographic slash statistics. So Yemen's 2020 population is estimated at 29,825,964 people at mid-year according to UN data. The median age in Yemen is 20.2 years old. The nominal or current gross domestic product of Yemen is 31 billion 267 million 675,216 dollars as of 2017. Human's gross domestic product, which is constantly adjusted for inflation, has reached 19 billion 564 million 886,828 in 2017. Yemen's gross growth rate in 2017 was negative 5.94% representing a very negative change of uh sorry negative 1 billion 236 million 8097 US dollars over 2016 when real gdp was 20 billion 800 million 94925 the united states data shows the adult literacy rate for yemen is in 2007 is 40.5% for females and 77% for males the overall literacy rate for the populations of ages 15 and older was 49%. There has been an improvement in literacy rate from 37.1% in 1994 to 58.9% in 2016. The type of government that Yemen has is called a republic with a bicameral legislature. Under their constitution, an elected president and elected 301 seat House of Representatives and appointed to 111 member Sura Council share power. The president is head of state and the prime minister is head of the government. The per capita income in Yemen with a population of over 27 million people was 703 US dollars in 2017, which is a decrease from $63 in 2016. This represents a change of negative 8.2% in gross domestic product per capita. Explaining the families of law. So I'm going to go over this legal system based on Islamic law. Turkish law, English common law, and local customary law. Religion was ruled by Zayd dynasty from 897 under nominal Ottoman control from 1517 until 1636 when Zayd rulers reasserted, reasserted sovereignty. By the 1660s, British control of southern Yemen limited to Aden, guerrilla fighting, and British withdrawal in 1967 culminated in establishment of people's democrat. Democratic Republic of Yemen in the south. Relations between two humans streamed during 1970s, but improved by 1980s, and the reunification was planned. Proposed reunification took place in 1990 and survived the subsequent civil war. One treaty that can be talked about is the Stockholm Agreement. The Stockholm Agreement is a voluntary accord between the parties of the conflict in Yemen. It was agreed in Stockholm, Sweden on the 13th of December in 2018. The Stockholm Agreement has three main components. It is an agreement on the city of Hudaid Yara and the ports of Hudaid Yara Salif and Ros Isa. Executive mechanism on activating the prisoner exchange agreement, a statement of understanding on ties, and what were the main commitments stipulated in the Stockholm Agreement? So an agreement on the city of all data and the ports of Hudaid Salif and Ros Isa. For the specific crime on international crime, you may notice that in Saudi Arabia, there are very harsh rules in their criminal justice system. While committing an international crime, such as the transportation of drugs into the country, would most likely result in the severe punishment of these individuals, most likely being locked up for a very long amount of time, or in Yemen's criminal justice system, is very dangerous and can find individuals and can pursue capital punishment, which is essentially the death penalty. Uh, the death penalty if i were to compare it to the movie i would say all people who end up caught will be sentenced to capital punishment saudi arabia's government is not to be played with and is very serious and although i think that saudi arabia's government lacks its government involvement within the community i'd also believe that saudi arabia is very dangerous as a whole transnational crime is a is a threat to development governance stability and security and is one of the biggest challenges to to the region has yet to confront 
Worse yet, the more, the more time governments take to act decisively against transnational crime, the more likely it is for illicit economies to spring up in even the most stable and diverse regions. Yemen and Libya are probably the, the, largest, sorry, the largest markets for trafficking arms or guns, and they, they are sourced from captured weapons such as caches and supplied by external actors. Most of these arms or armored vehicles can be for sale on the open air market. In conclusion, Yemen has a very serious issue with their criminal justice system. I believe their involvement within the community strongly lacks sufficient education and under government power. As a researcher who was put on the field, I am confident in the information provided. Thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed uh, all the information provided. Thank you.